Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about leadership and gifts in the body of Christ. When we become a Christian, we find that the big questions in life are answered. Who am I? I am a child of God. I am accepted. I am secure. I am significant. Why am I here? To enjoy God, to be in a loving relationship with the Father, with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes though, we still want to ask related questions. How best can I serve God? What can I do? What do I have that I can give back to him? Today, we would like to help you think through some of these things. Who likes birthdays and Christmas? Who likes to receive gifts? The Bible says we have all received grace upon grace. It's from John chapter 1 verse 16. Ephesians 8, uh, chapter 4 verse 8 says of Jesus, when he ascended to heaven, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to mankind. What gifts have you been given by Jesus? Are you using them to ensure the body of Christ is functioning the way it should be. Everyone has a part to play. Yes, that really does include you. Stay tuned to find out more. We are going to start with an example of leadership from Nehemiah. We're going to think about transformation. And the answer is always Jesus. So we are going to see what we can learn from him, from Jesus. It's important that the body as a whole works well together. Everyone has a part to play. Who here has the job of serving coffee and tea? Do we have tea and coffee servers? How important, how vital are you guys? Let's look at the Old Testament to find out why you are important. Nehemiah. Nehemiah himself was cupbearer to the king. Look in Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 1. Nehemiah was the guy who served the drinks. A, a waiter or a sommelier. Now, he had to be trustworthy. They didn't want anyone to be poisoned. Nobody wants to catch something nasty from their cup of tea after church, do they? So that was the job that Nehemiah did for a while, until God moved him on to do something different. It just so happened that the walls of Jerusalem needed to be rebuilt. But God has got something lined up for all his tea and coffee makers. Now Nehemiah trusted God to sort things out for him. If you haven't read the book of Nehemiah before, you, you need, when, when you've got a bit of time, you need to sit down and read it through, okay? Because Nehemiah did some sensible things. First of all, he made sure that the king was happy with his plans. He found some good people to journey with him. He ensured that there'd be supplies of things that would be needed, but most importantly, he trusted in God for protection on the journey. When he got to Jerusalem, he spent a little bit of time checking out what needed to be done. Then he set things in motion. But even though he was a leader, he didn't do the work himself. He worked to enable and encourage the community. And the community did the work. Nehemiah could have made himself king. In fact, his opposers accused him of doing exactly that. Look in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 6. But instead, Nehemiah didn't even make use of the tax levies that his position made available to him. See Nehemiah 
chapter 5, verse 18. Nehemiah made sure that the individuals that did the work got the credit. The whole of chapter 3 is dedicated to who did what. Name after name after name. Even though some of them didn't really pull their weight in that list. Even some, though some of them were secretly conspiring against him were named in that list. He gave them credit. Despite active opposition from all quarters, the walls were rebuilt. In record time, archaeologists have been absolutely amazed by the extent and quality of what was achieved by this extraordinary partnership. In just 52 days, this encircling wall, some two and a half metres thick, that's broader than I can stretch, eight feet thick, complete with massive gates and multiple towers was completed. That's less than two months. It is remarkable what can be achieved when the community works together, each doing what they do best. It matters who you serve. Yes, Nehemiah got off to a good start because he served the king of Persia. But the walls of Jerusalem were only rebuilt in record time because Nehemiah served the king of kings. Who are you serving? Who are you aiming to please? You've heard this next scripture before, I'm sure. And I'm sure also that you acknowledge the truth of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are a body. We are the body of Christ at Ashford Common. Our destiny and our goal as the body of Christ at Ashford Common and as a part of the body of Christ Universal. Our destiny and our goal is to be presented to Jesus as his bride. It says in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2, I promised you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. Similar theme comes out in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 to 27. What should we be doing working with Paul to prepare the body as a bride? We could take a simplistic, individualistic view and focus only on ourselves. That might seem reasonable. It's not a bad thing. However, we're not talking about how do we each make our own individual cell healthy. We are talking about how do we make the body as a whole fit to be a bride. We need a transformation in our thinking. A transformation as in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Now, just down here, you might see a picture of an athlete on a podium, and you might think he's pretending to be lightning. Or you might not, you might not be able to see it that well. But we chose this one because at a distance, the athlete appears to be pointing the way to go. Now, let's look at Hebrews 12 verses 1 and the end of that verse. Let us run with patient endurance the race that is set before us. The race that we are running is not short. We are not aiming to be the fastest humans over a 100 metre sprint. Rather, our race is a long, continuous one. Multiple marathons spread over many days, if not years. That is why 
patient endurance is called for. We usually interpret Hebrews 12 verse 1 in an individualistic way. We focus on how should I run, but that misses the emphasis. It says, let us run the race before us. So we need to ask, how should we run together? How do we run better as the body of Christ? What should we be doing? How should we be functioning together here on earth? Are you collectively being transformed? Now, what does a body need to be healthy? What does it need to be ready and able to run? It needs multiple properly working systems. A cardiovascular system, the way blood circulates around. A body needs a, a digestive system. It needs to be able to take in food, extract nutrition and expel waste. It needs a respiratory system, breathing apparatus. It needs a musculoskeletal system. Just let me put my teeth back in. A musculoskeletal system. The right bones in the right places, connected together with the right tissues. I could go on and on and on. The number of systems in the body seems to have increased over time. They used to think it was about five, and I think we're up to about 14 these days. In this expression of the body of Christ, in this church, in this location, which body system are you part of? Do you know? Absolutely sweet. What is uh, the function within that body system? What is it that makes, what is it about you that makes you the right person for that function in that body system? Do you know? Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Who wants to be like Jesus? Yeah, we've got some hands raised. Who wants to be like Jesus? Again, we could each answer this as individuals, which is fine, it's good. But, like Hebrews 12 verse 1, being plural, Hebrews 12 verse 2 is also plural. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. It's really focusing on the body as a whole. Are there things in the Bible from which we can then derive understanding about how the body might function better. This pretty picture is to remind us that Jesus is the star. Are the words in the Bible that give us an indicator of how Jesus did things? Let's have a look in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 says, Being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. So Jesus is the cornerstone, the most important piece of the whole structure. Yes, apostles and prophets are foundational. That's why the star looks as though it's treading on the A and the P. That's deliberate. Apostles and prophets may end up feeling that they're trodden down. Ephesians 4 goes into a little bit more detail though, and particularly in verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers. So, a list of five gifts. That's great. But before we go anywhere else, let us look again at Jesus. Jesus is our example for everything. 
how we should live, how we should love, how we should serve. Jesus was and is the specific example we should follow for each gift. For each of these five gifts of Jesus, there are key texts illustrating that Jesus is the archetypical example, the exemplary standard for each of the fivefold ministries, apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. If you want to know what ought to be done within each of the gifts, look first to Jesus. Jesus is our example as teacher. John 3, 2 says, he came at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus was recognised as a teacher. Mark 13, 1. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. It was clear to the disciples that Jesus was teaching them and they were learning from him. An example, as a shepherd, John chapter 10, verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, and Jesus laid down his life for us. Hebrews 13, 20 says, Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Giving us a glimpse of what Jesus was doing. Mark chapter 14, 27 says, You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Jesus is the shepherd. But Jesus acted as an evangelist. Luke chapter 19, verses 9 to 10, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost Jesus is our example of an evangelism is as of an evangelist seeking and saving the lost Jesus is our example as prophet John 6:14 when, therefore, the people saw the sign which Jesus did, they said, This is truly the prophet who comes into the world. The people of the time were looking for the prophet that had been spoken about in the Old Testament, and they recognised Jesus as the prophet. And when his disciples on the road to Emmaus remembered this, Luke twenty four nineteen. What things, he asked, about Jesus and Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. Mark 21, 11, the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And Jesus is our example also as apostle. Hebrews 3, verse 1, therefore... Holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. An apostle is someone who is sent. John 20, verse 21, Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father sent me, so I send you. The Father sent Jesus why he was and is our apostle. Now I've only had a brief time to look through these few gifts. We started with an example of leadership from Nehemiah. We began to think about the transformation that we need into being the bride of Christ. We looked at the answer always being Jesus so we looked to see what we could learn from him. We found that he, Christ himself, 
gave gifts to the church. We found that Jesus is the star, that he's always our example. And now we need to move forward and understand our place, our body system, our function within our body system. Are you ready for a journey? Are you ready to learn more? Are you ready to find out more about which body system, which function, which part you have to play with that? That's all we have time for today. If you're not sure about which gift Christ has given you, talk to Hilary or myself. If you've got an idea of what your gifting is, but you're not quite sure how to use it within the church, talk to the leaders and they'll help you with that. Let's pray together. Father God, we ask that you will put upon our hearts an impression of what it is you've given to us, an idea of how we might use the gifts that you've given to serve you, to bring glory to you, here and now, in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you found that sermon helpful and would like to join us again on another Sunday. In the meantime, you'll find resources available at our website, on YouTube. So please do take the opportunity to have a look, but let's hope to see you soon. God bless you.